Okay, so here we have our 12 kilowatt solar array. So this is not completely finished, but we have space for 32 panels. We've uh, decided to leave most of the bottom panels off because this is still a goat pasture and we didn't want the goats chewing wires before we got everything up and running. So uh, we're doing some cross pen pasture fencing here in the next couple days and so the goats won't have access to this paddock and we'll finish throwing panels on this bottom row here. As you can see we have panels stacked three high and they're angled at a 45 so our location here is uh, I think about 44 degrees latitude so 45 degree is pretty much pointed at the solstice sun and it was easier for me to design it and find parts uh, using 45 degrees as my angle and so that's what made sense uh, here in Oregon we get a lot of overcast um, in the winter months so while I wanted to face it more towards the winter sun uh, since the sun doesn't shine very much in the winter it made more sense to kind of hit those solstice uh, sorry not solstice uh, rewind equinox those equinox points in the sky so spring and fall equinox this uh, array is uh, pointed to and generating the most power now my pa my array faces uh, southwest um, and the reason for that is because to this direction we have a row of trees second growth Douglas firs that are 200 plus feet tall and that's kind of blocking a little bit of that morning sun but that's okay because we also have a lot of morning time fog um, and so uh, it made more sense to kind of capture that afternoon sun um, anyway uh, when you're designing your array it's really important to uh, consider where the sun is at different points in the year. So as I was designing this I was thinking about I was coming out here and taking a look where the sun was in the winter solstice and uh, even got an app for my phone to kind of give me an idea where the sun would be at different points of the year. And so I kind of was able to to take some time and, and find the right orientation for these panels which is really important. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about today how I designed this and, uh, you know, I tried to find the cheapest, most effective method possible for a DIY build and so I used, uh, we'll go down here and take a quick look. You can see I used these uh, galvanized metal signposts. So I have some that are going to the ground. I have these pieces here, which are like sleeves. And then I have these longer lengths here, which go into the sleeve. So I have the sleeves tied into these ground posts. And I have these longer pieces that go right into the sleeves. And then I find the found these uh, 45 degree pieces here that pretty much converted from the metal signpost to the super strut and strut is pretty good for the panels to be mounted on and now we have aluminum versus steel here so we have uh, a bonding issue that uh, we need to address and we'll go under and check that out in a little bit but uh, yeah you could see we have under here we have the metal signposts here and uh, they go sink into the ground about three feet uh, sometimes more in some places um, and 
and we have these cross brace quarter inch uh, <clears throat> cables with uh, some turnbuckles which is a little dark maybe we can see a better view on the other end uh, and that keeps everything nice and steady so uh, you know these pieces here you could probably find uh, steel price has gone up quite a bit but you can find eight foot lengths of those square signpost tubes for maybe about 40 bucks a piece. I've found them cheaper in the past, but at those days of that may be long gone. Uh, the cable's pretty cheap considering. I got the turnbuckles from, uh, um, maybe I'll put it in the description, but uh, they were on sale. They were just extra, so they're a little over-engineered. They're really large three-quarter inch turnbuckles, probably more than I needed. Really big key component here was finding these 45 degree um, <clears throat> uh, pieces here. And so that really converted going, you know, putting in a bolt here into the uh, square tubes and then putting a bolt here into the uh, super strut here and so that that those were really that was a key component to figuring out how I was gonna uh, put these two types of different pieces together and so these 45s are actually in the super strut category these are a piece that you can find when you're looking for super strut components and then uh, on the other other side uh, okay, so here we have stainless steel bolt that goes up and if we can see there, I'm not sure that we can, yeah, so here's the panel. So this is aluminum and then here is a flange nut that digs into that aluminum as you tighten it and a flange bolt down here and I have that digging into a a stainless steel washer and so I tighten it enough and the flange will bite and hopefully create that bond so that when you're uh, putting in your copper line uh, grounding line you don't need to connect it to every panel it's already bonded to the metal and who knows I don't know maybe someone can speak to it but since these posts are three feet down maybe this whole array is bonded uh, already without even needing the grounding wire, but uh, we're gonna do the grounding wire also. So one of the awkward things about this setup is since I have the array as three panels high and one on the ground that's not there, maybe we'll go over here. Um, you know, I'm doing pretty much, since I have 32 panels, it'll be, uh, you know, four sets of eight panels each, which don't really go well in like a three height configuration that we have here. And so the wiring is going to be a little weird, but not, not too hard. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out, but, uh. I just didn't want to go too high and do two panels um, more in the vertical um, portrait orientation um, because of the unlevel ground. You can see over here the array is almost touching the ground where that final panel goes in at the very end. And over here there's over three foot clearance to where that final panel goes in. So over this stretch of maybe about 60 feet, we have about three feet in drop in elevation. And so that means that this top panel here would be getting pretty high up if it were to do two panels stacked in a port portrait orientation. So it just made more sense to do it in three and make it a little longer than a little taller. Uh, and this will give you a good idea. You could see with these panels, or with this here, I used a sleeve to combine 
the, you know, this is maybe where the eight foot uh, square post ends. And this is where the new, I, you know, had to cut it at some point, but the new post begins. And this is a sleeve that just kind of holds it in place. Um, so that you could buy square foot or square signposts that are, you know, 12 feet tall. Um, that, that probably would do the trick, but I found it cheaper just to buy, buy eight foot sections and cut them up where I needed and just have a few of these extra, basically they call them anchor sleeves or sleeves or, uh, square anchors. Um, found those to be pretty good. So yeah, you can see I do cross bracing here with the, the cable. Um, and then here's the turnbuckle, right? So if I need to tighten it, I could just turn it this way. Um, these turnbuckles were $7 a piece, so even though they're bigger than I needed, uh, you know, it's good to, to go over than under. And then on this side I have the cross bracing here too so you can see where those wires cross and go up and each has a turnbuckle that can get tightened so when I ran wire one of the cool things you can do with uh, the um, square signpost since you have 7 16 holes every inch on center uh, you can do a lot of cool things. A, you can, your measurements are easy, right? So you can see here, I have an, an X for where this, uh, junction, this is in the, not the center, but this is, you know, I'm able to really count holes easily to get where I need everything to go. And so the measurements are pretty easy. But the other thing that was pretty cool, I was able to put some of these, uh, eye bolts up and, uh, basically have all my wire fed around into the pasture um, you know had a helper kind of pulling wire and then had it going in at a steady you know consistent point into the conduit and we were pulling that from uh, 200 feet away and so it was just being fed and and what's really important is when you're putting wire into the conduit you don't want you know this wire coming over here and you know you're trying to stretch stuff around these 90s and you start getting the wires a little bit uh, tangled it can uh, create issues and so that yeah, was kind of a, a cool little concept there being able to feed each wire through its uh, specific eye bolt here so I had a few extra of those on hand those are the same eye bolts I used to secure the, the turnbuckles so I had a few extra on hand um, I don't know the cheapest way to do an array you know for for me this is a 12 kilowatt array um, it was originally gonna go on a roof and then I had to uh, I watched the Sun and I decided that the roof was not the best option uh, so I decided to do a ground mount instead and uh, you know when you've sunken costs into another system and you know it's not always the best feeling to to go back and start again but I decided that you know I'd use these square signposts in the past and that uh, they would be uh, you know applicable to this situation and so yeah we have a really solid structure here um, you know, the components are relatively inexpensive and, you know, it'll last a long time. So, uh, yeah, so feeling pretty good about this. And, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just comment below and I'll make sure I get to them. Thanks for watching.